Howdy. I am currently on a walk, but as you can see, a highly distracted walk. I'm filming to keep my mind off of the fact that I'm exercising because we don't always want to exercise even though we know it's good for us. Today I want to show you some tricks to get you moving. You know I take my exercise seriously because I wear my flippity floppies, aka my slippity sloppies. So really, any movement will do. I know, exercise sucks. Exercise is for tomorrow. Hot Cheetos con limon are for today. Bubs is for today. I get it. But even a short jaunt like this, or heck, a voyage across your home and back a few times, that's enough to get your blood circulating, improve your memory, reduce your chances of a heart attack, stroke, or diabetes. But you already knew that. We all know that exercise is good for us. It's a hundred percent guaranteed returns. And yet we still don't do it. Why? At the core of exercise is really the ability to weigh short-term versus long-term benefits. How willing are you to sacrifice a little bit today in order to feel better and think better tomorrow? How willing are you to sacrifice a little bit on a consistent basis in order to live better, to live longer? How unwilling are you to lead a life of lethargy, depression, victimhood? I know you can never judge a person by their cover, but every time I see a person go out on a walk or I know that somebody's exercising, hitting the gym, I feel really proud of them. No matter where they are in their you know, health or fitness journey, because to make the attempt to go just once, just in that day, it tells me that they love their lives. And I think that is the most reassuring thing to see. I think it is the most courageous thing people can do. I think exercise really does boil down to that. How much do you love your life? And how much are you willing to sacrifice just a little bit right now for a great one? When we lace up our shoes and throw on a mask, we're giving our souls one of the kindest gifts of circulation, of care, of preservation, of love. And the best type of exercise to do is the one that you do. So even on a demotivated day like today, I've decided to take a highly distracted walk. Another way to exercise when you don't want to is to listen to a podcast or watch TV while doing it. James makes fun of me every time I do a Chloe Ting workout from my phone because I watch a different YouTube video simultaneously and on the larger screen of my laptop. That's just what it takes, okay? This is what my storefront looks like. Just way too much pink, just enough pink. What do you know? It's the library. Having fun isn't hard when you've got a library card. Okay, we are back from our walk and I have a lot more to say to you than just take a walk. Why is it that we do not do the thing we know is good for us? The reasons lie in powerful limiting beliefs that if reconstructed can become the very motivation we need to do the right thing. Acknowledge the power of the stories you tell yourself, reconstruct them, and see the change it manifests. Here's how to think about it. To exercise, we need to risk some short-term pain to feel long-term wellness. We all have a starting point on the spectrum of fulfillment or happiness. If you start off at zero, you lead a mediocre life. Maybe work just pays the bills. Maybe your love life is, yeah take it or leave it. Maybe your hobbies are becoming dull. I'd call that a zero life. From this point, you really don't want to plunge into the negative, so any decision to risk even short-term pain feels daunting because even though life is not great, at least it's not bad, right? You want to avoid the negative zone at all costs because you have an aversion to pain. In another example, you start off in the negative. Work sucks. You can't sleep. You barely want to wake up. Your plants are dying and so on. 
When you're already in the negative, there is less fear of pain itself because you're in it, um, but you still have an aversion to plummeting further into the pain. Why would you take any risks? Would the benefits ever restore you back to a positive life? These aren't highfalutin philosophical extremes. I see and hear these stories all the time. The zero lifer says, I'm not going to exercise because the last time I did it, it sucked. What's not being said is that they did not sustain that workout for long enough to see the benefits. Because they so fear the pain, they wince at a hint of it and quit. The person in the negative lives in the dumps, and we've all heard these stories. Why bother? It's not worth it. It doesn't matter how hard I try. It won't work. You know, a few push-ups won't be enough to get me fit, so there's no point. Well, you don't know unless you try, right? So I've outlined two types of limiting beliefs. Number one, the fear of pain itself or being in the negative. Number two, you might be in the negative, but you have an aversion to more pain, a fear of the direction going down. But let's reconstruct these narratives. Number one, the fear of pain itself prevents you from wanting to go into the negative. You're right, terrifying. However, let me introduce you to another fear, <laughs> the fear of staying the same. I want this fear to terrify you, to keep you up at night, to color all of your decisions in life. Staying the same is the riskiest, most dangerous behavior we can practice as humans. Our minds, our lives, our contributions demand that we change and grow over time. Our bodies are no different. When you are stagnant, thoughts entrench, parts rot, and the very life you have been so fortunate to experience loses color. So please, take your fear of pain and convert it to a fear of staying the same. Number two, now that we're moving and we want to move in a positive direction, we need to address the aversion to risk. A temporary downside that is so terrifying it prevents you from experiencing the greater upside. You know that you are suffering from this if this is the case for you and exercise, because exercise is a 100% guaranteed benefit. Whatever ounce of pain you feel exercising, you will 100% feel a payoff in your health, wellness, and longevity. So if you avoid exercise, you are definitely dealing with risk aversion. How do we possibly convert this aversion into something productive? Consider the quote, There is freedom waiting for you on the breezes of the sky. And you ask, what if I fall? Oh, but my darling, what if you fly? If you indulge in negative thinking and constantly tell yourself that pain is horrible and that risks need to be mitigated before you consider them, I want to offer you a force more powerful than fear. And that is love. But really, a love for better, a sustained desire for more health, more happiness, and a colorful life. This is a powerful antidote to your fears because the more you have the love of life, the less scary normal risks become. Now this is not easy work. Rewriting our stories, rewiring our brains, it takes immense courage and intelligence. But does it have to be so hard? It doesn't. Let's peep into the life of someone who starts off their day happy already and chooses to incorporate exercise into their daily lives to make themselves ever happier day after day. This individual is extremely resilient to good risks. They can afford to knock out 50 crunches or run a mile because when it sucks in the moment, they have positivity to spare and they know that the benefits will outweigh the short-term costs. This individual gets to live like this, and every day, every year, they outdo themselves to reach new levels of fulfillment and peace. They have the fear of pain, the aversion to trending downward, but they also fear staying the same more than anything, and love life enough to do something about it. When a positive person takes a dip, they land here for a moment in time. This area represents all that they are still positive about, gratitude for life and breath, excitement about tomorrow, and a long list of things in life that are good. 
The most positive people know that the majority of that list is unearned. Things like having loved ones, their relative health, having civil rights, clean water, internet, good weather. It goes on. My third and last takeaway is that every day is a new beginning, but it quickly falls into the scripts of what you allow to persist in your mind. Change your mind, if even for a day, to see what will manifest. The difference between this person and this and this is largely in the mind. It is largely to do with gratitude. So if you are not finding the motivation to work out, I challenge you to the most critical exercise in life to be grateful. Please take to heart anything in this video that sparks curiosity or challenge. These are survival signs and you should heed it. I'm also in the three digit subscriber club now. So thank you all so much for subscribing to my videos and let me know down below what your three gratitudes are. I would love to read whether or not you feel motivated, you're working on it, or you are just high off of life because you are so grateful. The air is not so great. This year is one for the books, but I wish you all great health, happiness, and peace. We are still so much stronger than this. We have reserves of resilience we haven't even tapped yet. You're doing great and you are loved.